Hello everybody! Today I'm going to walk you through our new virtual admission system application. So this is a shorter version of the video that is already available on our authorized agents page up here. This is a really great page filled with useful resources for you. And there is a longer video explaining uh, the VAS system uh, right here at this link. So if you open that link, it will take you to a video that's about 45 minutes long and you can check that out as well. So this is like the short and condensed version of the online application system. Okay, so in order to find our application, one way you can do this is you can go to the bowvalleycollege.ca website, click on applying, find the link for international application, and then we are going to be looking for spring 2022 or later, which is our new system. Uh, but here we can just click on apply now to go to our VAS system. And here is where you will log in your agent information and your agent password. So today I'll be using a test site, which is the identical site, uh, just to walk you through it. Okay, so first off, you're gonna sign in. I think that that is probably the most challenging part of the new application. Okay, once the page loads, you will see something similar to this. You will go to the applications drop down menu and click on add application for a new application. And this is really straightforward. Basically, we're just going to fill in all of the information. Note that the information with the star or asterisk is required information. So this is information for the student that you're applying for. So this is your agent account. And here, when you're starting an application, everything will be for the student that you're applying for. So I'll just zoom through this quickly. Again, anything with an asterisk we need to fill in. Here where it says email ID, this will be the student's email ID because you're in the agent account, we have your contact information on hand. So make sure in this section, you include the student's email ID or email. We do need the student's passport number. So make sure you have that on hand. If the passport has already expired, that's no problem. Okay. So for here, where we are filling in under which status are you planning to enter Canada? We can choose student visa for most people would be applying for a student visa. And then here we have our Alberta student number. So you need to make sure that the student hasn't applied to a school in Canada previously or rather in Alberta previously um, because we don't want to have duplicate Alberta student numbers. So as long as they have not applied to any other school in Alberta before, uh, we could generate a new ASN by clicking on this link. So I will go over that in another video. It's very simple, but for now, let's just put in a sample number. It's a nine digit number. Are you currently attending or have you previously studied in a post-secondary institution in Canada? So please note this is in Canada, uh, just because we need official transcripts um, sent directly from the Canadian institution if this is the case. So let us pretend that the student has not studied in Canada, they have not previously attended Bow Valley College, and um, would they like to share their application information with a representative? Again, because you are the agent and you are applying here through your account, uh, you will have to upload our consent to release information form. But this part here is for a family member or friend or something like that. So not the agency. Okay, so this would be friend or relative or other. Uh, the agency is already included just because you are filling out this form for the student. So let's say no, but this could be uh, if a parent or somebody else would like to uh, know what's happening with the application. So we just click through next and everything will save automatically. So I'll go through this quickly again. Just a reminder, everything with an asterisk needs to fill, be filled in. Okay, and to save, we click next. So in qualifications, we will now include the student's study history. So if they studied in their home country, uh, high school, this is where uh, this would come in. Again, if there's no asterisk, you don't actually have to fill it in. So if you're not sure what to put in qualification award body country, or you're confused by anything here, really you could technically skip over it. 
Okay, so I'll fill this in a little bit more completely, but again, it's not necessary if it doesn't have a star. Okay. At qualification two, a lot of the students coming into our programs already have studies at the university level. So if the student does have studies at the university level, then you could fill this in. Okay, and again, if they do not have their uh, diploma or their certificate or their courses in progress, we can put a future end date. That's totally fine. And we can say that the student is uh, in progress. Please be sure to include any qualification that the student has. So even if they don't have uh, the qualification or they only did maybe half or a portion of their undergraduate degree, please do make sure that you include that. Okay, and then you would just click on add a qualification, next, and we will move along. So next here, we're looking at English language qualifications. So we could enter the data for any one of these tests uh, TOEFL, IBT, IELTS Academic, and so on. Right now, a lot of people are taking advantage of the fact that we are accepting Duolingo at least until the end of 2022. So here you could include the student's score if they already have their, um, if they already have their results back, the date that they completed this, and the student ID from Duolingo. Remember with Duolingo that the student will also have to go into the Duolingo account and grant access to Bow Valley College to be able to see the results. And we will also, at a later part in this application, be uploading academic documents as well, including the results from the Duolingo or whatever exam of English the student has chosen to take. Here, we also have, just to keep an eye out, our ELL pathway program. So if somebody has studied at one of our pathways or is studying at one of our pathways, we could include that here. All right, and here's where we get to the application. Here you can write your name. So this is your, the counselor, you're counseling the student, uh, your email. Then we are going to decide if this student is going to apply to ELL plus the post-secondary academic program, or if they will just be applying to ELL or just be applying to a post-secondary program. So in this case, I said that the student has a 100 in the Duolingo, so we will assume that they do not need the ELL program. If they were to, the dates would come up down here and we would choose the start date, okay? But because this student will not be applying to ELL, we will skip that and then we will be applying to a post-secondary program. The, the great thing about this system is that we will only be paying one application fee now for the application to both programs if the student opts for that option. So we will say they're just going to post-secondary program. We will save that, click on the start date. So this system is for anything after May 2022. We will choose the level. Let's say they're going into a post-diploma certificate in Health and Human Services management so we save that okay and that's the general information there complete for the student we still have a few more steps such as uploading documents and paying the application fee okay this is the page where we are going to upload the mandatory documents so the passport is a mandatory document along with high school transcripts we also need the consent to release information form and I will show you where you can find that. It's basically on that first page where I referred you to. Uh, here, we just click on consent to release information form and find it under the prospective student link. So we need to make sure that that form is filled in as well. I'll just click through quickly. So it is right here. Okay, so this form needs to be filled out and signed by the student and uploaded into the virtual admission system as well. So those are the three required documents. Um, make sure that with the high school documents that we need original language and we need official translations into English. All of these documents should be all together in one PDF file. Note that there is a maximum file size. It is quite large. Um, but if you have trouble uploading something, just make sure that you're under the maximum file size. You could also be uploading post-secondary documents, English language proficiency documents. Um, if you have everything on hand when you're applying, I think it makes the whole process a little bit uh, more smooth. So you can take that into consideration. So 
Uh, basically with these, you just click on select a file to upload, click on whichever document you know you need and we upload it and we're ready to go and continue. So we will need all of these files here in order to continue on and we will continue on. So this page is basically just to accept the terms and conditions described here. So we will click accept to that, save that. And now our application hasn't been submitted yet because we need to pay the $140 application fee in order to continue. So here we accept credit card on VAS. If you need to pay in another form, this could slow the application down quite a bit. So I would highly recommend applying with a credit card. Click on pay now and we will go ahead and put in the payment information. Okay, so just a side note here. When you create this application, the student will also receive a VAS account login and a temporary password. So actually the student could go in and put in this information themselves if they feel more comfortable uh, going ahead and doing this part themselves, they can definitely do that, which is a great option for our agents. Okay, and we will click on process transaction. Send anyway. Okay, so we had a successful payment and now, so we can see the documents that we uploaded, more personal details, which program the student applied to, here's the student name, um, and we could also send a message directly to our team uh, if you have anything that you would like to write to us. Just to keep in mind, all communication will be sent to you via this system. However, you can change your settings so that you can get notifications sent to your email. You only have to do this one time. Uh, you basically just click on your profile up here, uh, click on please send email on this activity and save that. And then you should be getting application updates to your email as well. So again, if you wanna check on something, you can click on view applications that will show you applications that have already been submitted and you can check to see uh, any updates there. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or questions and I would be happy to give you a hand. Thank you so much. Take care.